Hello everyone, this is Nick, and welcome back to Subnautica Hardcore. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start this episode off by making four of these water filtration machines that we just unlocked the blueprint to last episode. Uh, so I already went ahead and got uh, all the materials here. I got my ruby and aerogel for each to make four aerogels, or four rubies for gel sacks, better said to make four aerogels, got my copper wire, got my titanium. Now this is definitely not something you want to try if you don't have a nuclear reactor. I think a bioreactor can maybe support two of these, one or two, not really sure, gonna have to watch my, uh, my structural integrity there, I might, I could just make it, it looks like. Um, so yeah, I, I think if you have a bioreactor loaded up and powered, I think it can support one or two of these, not four, so you definitely want a nuclear uh, reactor to try and do this. But this is basically going to give us an endless supply of really good water, uh, plus 50 water bottles, and uh, salt. So we're going to be able to have a bunch of salt for anything we might care to make, uh, curing food, uh, creating bleach. Um, that's it, really. I don't really know if salt is used for anything else, but it's going to give us an overabundance of salt. Uh, and I guess to kind of store stuff, I'm probably going to want to get a couple of lockers here, but I want the nice big ones. That's quartz and two titanium. All right. Get a little locker sort of here. Because I believe these have more space than the wall ones. Uh, yes, significantly more space than the wall ones. Not exactly centered. Might freak me out a little bit in the future, but good enough. Good enough. Yeah, we'll just have that. This is where we're going to put all our salt and all our and all our water bottles. So we're eventually going to stop using this little survival locker over here. Eventually going to clean it out and put everything in sort of nearer to the Seamoth because that's going to be our entrance and exit for future endeavors. So let's go ahead and just take four disinfected waters, two cured peepers. Uh, the Seamoth has pretty much everything else I could possibly want for where I'm going to go uh, because we're going to go finally visit those damn Groundwalker Leviathans I've been talking about for so many episodes. So let's go... All systems online. You know what? I want to make myself a compass. I don't have a compass, and I need a compass. <laughs> Forgot I picked that up a while back. There we go. We've got our nice little compass markers up top there where our depth meter is. So that's going to help us start to navigate a little bit better. All right, let's go. My inventory is decently empty. Let's head on over and see if we can finally find those little bastards I've been talking about for so long. Here we go. Okay, so they actually were at 300, or just below 300 meters, just a lot further away than I had originally anticipated. 1,300 meters away from my habitat, and I think I had only ever looked a couple of hundred, maybe max 800, something like that, so they were just a lot further away. But yeah, look at these things. Aren't they gorgeous? I think they're called the Sea Treaders or Ground Treaders or Sea Treaders, yes. Now what's so great about these beautiful little leviathans is that uh, they stomp all over the seabed and they dig up lithium, or they dig up shale outcrops, and that's where you get uh, lithium, diamonds, see, everywhere they stomp, or, I don't know if everywhere, I don't know, and I don't know if they can stomp on you, that was pretty close. But, um, there we go. In a lot of places, most places they stomp with a very high percentage, they will dig up shale outcrops, and you can just sit here and farm lithium, gold, and diamonds for decades. Not really, because... was a scary noise. Not really for decades, because you do have uh, an inventory capacity, but you can keep coming back here over and over and over. I don't actually know if they can stomp on you. I'm not really going to test it, because, you know, hardcore mode. And I don't expect to survive a stomp. Did he just poop? Did he just poop? Yes, he did! Alien feces! <laughs> oh, gorgeous. Nutrient-rich stuff for bioreactors. 
thing is, I don't really need it, but it's fun. I'm really going to want to prioritize probably not really gold uh, or diamonds. Pretty sure this bastard was trying to stomp on me. There's another piece of alien feces. Probably the one I... Yeah, they're 100% trying to stomp on me, aren't they? Ah, lithium inventory full. Well, I'll drop a gold for a lithium. I will do that. There we go. Nope. No, they're 100% trying to stomp on me, aren't they? Yep, I'm pretty sure they are. So, we've got a full inventory of gold, diamond, and lithium. Let's head on back. Uh, and I guess what I can probably do for ease of uh, finding this later on is go ahead and drop a little beacon right here. Sea treaders. So now that little beacon's always going to tell us where they are, so I don't have to fumble around searching anymore. And let's go get that next uh, plasteel ingot made and drop our depth limit to 900 meters on this beautiful little sea moth. Oh, our habitat's looking nice and badass for now. Oh, I love those multi-purpose rooms. Welcome aboard, Captain. Thank you, voice. Oh, oh! Just salt. Alright, so let's put everything in its respective place. And get another plasteel ing- er, yeah. A Fucking titanium! Alright, finally got a very decent amount. It's all gonna run out in an episode, so... And the plasteel. Now, I'm pretty sure the Mark III module requires three rubies instead of, um... Yeah, three rubies and that Mark II depth module. Ah, the lights! And we've got our first filtered water, waters made. And just start making a little stockpile of water, because we still have disinfected waters I'm going to want to use before I use these. But yeah, those are fantastic. Oh, you know what? There, there, there we go. And the peeper. There we go. Mark three Seamoth Depth Module. Oh, yes. All right, so we've got a little bit of water. We don't have much food, but that's fine because we have the Thermoblade now. And the Thermoblade allows us to do this. There we go, cooked spade fish. <laughs> Yummy! All right, well, we've already run out of water, so let's actually take two of these. We've got that Thermoblade for anything we need to cook, and let's go ahead and head to that uh, lower Degasi proposed habitat thingy. So, crush depth now 900 meters, absolutely beautiful. And this is where we start to get into somewhat dangerous territory here. This is where hardcore mode starts to get uh, a little bit perilous. Looks to... Man, those fish are really suicidal. Looks to be right below us. This... Oh, already running into the little warpers. Let's just keep kind of coming around here. I think it might be sort of further... Ah, this would look to be something of an entrance to the pro newly proposed Degasi habitat. Warper, right on me. I don't want to get too close to him. He's probably going to pull me out of this sea moth. I did see a little uraninite crystal over there. Oh, warpers all over the place. And as we saw previously, and there's the first crab squid of the game. Definitely want to keep my distance from that. No, that's a different thing. That's that's it. That's it. Over there. 151 meters that way. Oh, warper right there. Two warpers. Yeah, this is... This is really where it starts to get a little bit on the dangerous side. Got a crab squid following us. And unfortunately, this is also where we start to get... Oh, big crab squid right there. This is also where we start to get a lot of FPS drops, especially when we go down to the next part we'll probably visit in an episode or two. Oh, no, 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 don't you deet 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 at me, crab squid. A titanium mm. somewhere in this area. 
no, 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 no. I know, I know. But just stay right there. So we detected a titanium mass somewhere. There's a PDA right there. The crab squid seems to be behind that structure. Yeah, it's behind that structure. Let's pick that up. Get back in the Seamoth. Paul Torgal's log number three. Let's listen to that. The end. Came out of nowhere. An alien kraken bigger than a cyclops. Tore a hole clear through the reinforced hull. I barely got my breather in time. I told her. I said others would come. A rupture threw me clear of the habitat. And the monster turned and bore down on me. And just as its tentacles came within reach, neither appeared out of nowhere. She had a sea glide in one hand, a jagged piece of scrap metal in the other. She meant to butcher that beast or die trying. The last I saw her, she had the metal lodged in its neck as the monster did its best to shake her, contorting off into the darkness. I'm certain she got her wish, one way or another. Then I thought I saw a light deep below me. I hope maybe Bart had swum clear. I followed it. Now I wonder whether I saw anything at all. Our oxygen is low. The habitat is gone. I can't see the sky. Something surely has the scent of my blood. New uh. blueprint acquired. Poor Degasi people. Oh ho ho, the orange Integrate tablet. New PDA data. And we're starting to run a little bit low on oxygen. Let's go ahead and pick up this PDA. That's Degasi voice log 8. We picked up 9. Let's just make sure we... We get... In here. Oh, ho, 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 ho. well, I don't know if we, I don't think we have seven. No, we don't have seven. Let's go ahead and listen to eight. Margaret, Maida has boarded the habitat. What are you so happy about, Maida? Say, kid, I brought you something. Is that a leviathan outside? Towed it home on the back of the sub. You killed that thing? It's still breathing. I was about to finish the job, but I can stay in chat if you'd like. No. Then make yourself useful and pass me that hardened blade. Are you out of your mind? You brought that thing here? What if it's not as dead as it looks? What if others come? You prefer it got curious and came of its own accord, or got messed up and dragged here? When we get off this planet, I am going to drag you through every court in the damn Federation. Oh, Maida. Oh, look at that thing. It wants to eat me so bad. <laughs> All right, number nine, disaster. I have had it with you, risking our lives. Oh, stow it, Chief. The kid can't kill this disease without fish to study. I'm just bringing him home. What? Tell her. Tell her I'm right. You're both wrong. Marguerite, I can't find out how they resist the bacteria if you slaughter them all. It ain't always they oblige in coming in alive. He means you're being reckless. Father, the outcome's no better if we hold up in here and don't go outside. But we have to find a middle way. There is no compromise. Not while she's on my sea base. Your sea base? I'm going outside. Bart, Torgal has disembarked the habitat. Bart, come in. It's dangerous. Damn it, boy, I know you can hear me. Chief. Chief, get off the radio and put on your helmet. Why? What? Brace! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Scary stuff. And this should be... Ah, this is the number seven one that we missed. Integrating new PDA data. So this is before risk taking a disaster. Stop fighting and listen. We're sick. What? How? You've been coughing, right? Feeling itchy? Blisters? Yeah. 
the Biomatrix would have warned us if we were sick. It's something new. It's not in the database. Come on, then. What's it gonna do? Turn us inside out? Dissolve us into jelly? It's an alien bacteria. It's everywhere. Every organism on this planet. It's altering our genetic code. How are the creatures surviving if they're infected? I don't know yet. Want me to cut some of them open for you? Find out what makes them tick? No. Just tell me what you need, son. Materials. Equipment. Just... Can I have some quiet? I need some time to think. All right, well... A lot of dissent among the three remaining, or the three surviving Degasi people. Sadly, I believe they're all dead. They've, uh... But, oh, oh, couple of uraninite crystals down here. Oh, no, those are creature eggs. Those are creature eggs. And, ah! No, 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 no. That's also a creature egg. At least it looked like one. Oh, that crab squid's following me. Let's, uh, let's... That, was that Uran- are these creature eggs or Uraninite? You know what? I don't know. Let's go ahead and check it out. Oh no, it is Uraninite. Okay, okay. Is that crab squid following me? No. If I can get a fourth nuclear rod, or reactor rod, that would be great. So let's go ahead and pick up a couple of these. And I think it's probably time to just head on back to the habitat and be safe for a little bit. This is a nice scary place. But we are going to have to come back here. Mm, I don't know about next episode. We're probably going to do a couple of the other missions around the area. But uh, we are going to have to come back here to go even deeper down. But we'll revisit this at a later point. Warper's trying to get close to me to pull me out of my Seamoth. Now I just need to try and find an exit. Habitat's over there. So an exit should be... Ah, there we go. There are a bunch of exits. You just have to kind of swim around and find them. All right, let's head back to that habitat. Nice and safe. Got a couple of blueprints there. I'm really excited about those swim charge fins. That's exactly what I wanted. Thing is, I don't think I can make them for quite a while. I'm going to need... Um, I think they require some of the more advanced chemicals that I don't know how to make yet. So I'm going to have to look into those. All right, safe and sound back at my habitat. Let's go ahead and unload. Welcome aboard, Captain. And prepare for any future endeavors. Ah, so yeah, the moon, uh, the, the moon, oh my goodness, the moon, moon bay, moon, moon pool. The moon pool does recharge the Seamoth. I guess I had forgotten about that. Interesting. Any more Seamoth stuff we can do here? Depth module? Ah, the solar charger. Mm, perimeter defense system. Might need that. Can't make polyaniline, though. Uh, sonar? Mm, worth getting, worth getting. Copper wire and magnetite. I think so. I think we can make that. Put that in the Seamoth. Ah! I can just make one copper wire. There we go, Seamoth Sonar. Pop that in. And I think probably the next one we're gonna get is... Hmm, maybe the Perimeter Defense System. I don't know if it works for Reapers or Ghost Reapers or the big things like the Bone Sharks. I don't know if it works for those or just like Stalkers and stuff like that. Um, or if I want to get the Hull Reinforcement. The thing is, I don't know if that works against large terrifying things like reapers either i mean it does it, it does it, it does say preemptively hardens the chassis before collision so i don't know if that's just for me slamming into rocks or or slamming into fish or if it's actually uh, a reinforcement against attacks as well i might have to check that out um but i think we're probably good to leave that till next time so again thank you everyone very much for watching and join me back in the next episode